Hi, welcome back to our channel. My name is Jolie, and um, this is where we learn and read about Al Anon. We have Al Anon literature, it's a self help recovery group. We're uh, recovering from the thinking of alcoholism. So here we go. Courage to Change, Hope for Today. These are the books we're going to read today and one day at a time in Al-Anon. And then I have something else I'm going to read today, and that is um, from the Welcome Newcomer pamphlet, and it'll be So You Love an Alcoholic. I'll be reading that as well. So saying the serenity prayer at the end. And look who's here. We have Lilac here, Lilac Moon. She got her shots today. That was something else. And so uh, <laughs> she was not happy. <laughs> so yeah, that was, you know, isn't it stressful to have to take animals to the doctor? Yeah, it's, it's bad enough to take ourselves, but um, you know, we finally talk ourselves into going, right? But the animals were like, oh, they just, we just feel for them, right? All right, so today, I'll get to the point, is December 15th. So astrologically, just, you know, between now and the end of the month and beginning of January, just let's work on breathing, finding uh, ways to soothe ourselves and um and find some peace and serenity because, you know, heading into the, the holidays, it's just, you know, stressful as it is. So, and when we're dealing with alcoholics and addicts, um, whether or not they're using or not, or whether or not they're in a program like AA or not, we still have, you know, challenges with relationships, right? With all relationships. So with that said, let us remember God created us, your higher power, something beyond yourself, because that's um, part of the step work is to um, admit that we're powerless over addiction, right? And, uh, you know, a power greater than ourselves is the only way that we can heal. And it's one day at a time. So we do the best we can each day with our sense of connection that we can that we can um, encourage here and along with you know meetings and things like that that you can find and, and group with. So and also I want to announce that um, uh, January 1st is when I am going to start, reading the steps in the book, Paths to Recovery, Let me show it to you. If you can find it, that's great. If not, uh, oh, actually it's Reaching for Personal Freedom. It's a workbook. And so that's gonna start January 1st. I got a great suggestion to start then and I just was feeling, yeah, that makes sense. I'm trying to be real organized and I think January 1st is a good way to start. So, all right, here we go. You ready? Courage to change, here we go. For some time, step three eluded me. How could I turn my will and my life over to the care of a higher power? Just what we were talking about, right? You got to do that. But how can we do it, right? So I earnestly tried but I always took everything right back into my own hands. I felt, it felt too scary to think that I was not in control. I found it hard to trust that my higher power would be there for me if I let go completely. Again and again, I wondered what absolute surrender would feel like and how I would know if I was doing it. A recent, a recent speaker at an Al-Anon meeting put it into terms that I could understand. And he said, 
that turning our will over is like dancing with a partner. If both try to lead, there is much confusion and little forward movement. Right? So as one who has taught many couples how to dance, I know the awkwardness and bucking that result when both partners compete for control. But when the partner who is following can relax and let the other partner do the steering, the couple flows easily across the dance floor. And today's reminder, if I feel the bucking of uncertainty, despair, or fear, I can take it as a sign that I've gotten out of step. So then I can ask the God of my understanding to help me be more of a willing partner. Hmm, right? So there's a quote from the book In All Our Affairs, and it says, there are no guarantees that life will turn out the way we would like. But the program has shown me God's will is the only way. It is up to me to work with God and turn my life and will over to God's care and guidance. It's easier said than done. Maybe it's not so easy to say it. It's definitely not easy to do it, especially because we've all at least this is my experience. I always thought my insane thinking, I call it insane thinking because I can relate to that because I was feeling insane because I was like, why aren't they listening to me? If they would just do what I know is right, then they'll be fine. And it never worked that way because I couldn't ever really get anybody to do anything unless I manipulated or threatened or none of the, like when, when you have children, you can like tell them or cats, like, okay, you got to go to the doctor when they're small enough, when they're an animal, like you could put them in the cage and you take them there. But like she was having no part of that vaccine of, of her vaccinations today. So unfortunately they had to, they had to give her a shot so she would sleep because she was scratching the shit out of the doctor. And he, and I was afraid, you know, like I was like, wow, but I, it, it just reminded me of the, of that sense of like, wow, you know, I can't control, like there's certain things I can't control. Like I can't like tell her it's going to be okay. This is for her own good. I can't tell the alcoholic or in my life or the addict in my life that it's going to be better if they go to AA and do this, do the steps. Like I need to only, I can only do me. Like, so I need to keep in my own lane because this is who I can do me. I can do me with help from a power greater than myself, right? So that's the, I, that's the concept. And so it's working it daily, listening to other people share. That's why your comments are epic because it helps everybody. And, um, it helps me. And I started this whole channel just so that I can read and learn myself. So, and, um, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. And you spot it, you got it. So like, let's just get with the program here. We have distorted thinking. We're all affected by alcoholism. If you're in here one way or another, whether it's through your grandparents or their grandparents, and it's just like, it's, it's just, it's, it doesn't just go away. Like we're not all 
just magically healed. And then we can, you know, go on with our lives the way it was and because we know this stuff. It's, this isn't like you can read this book and move on. You, you need to just work it with other people. It's like this reminder. It's a lifestyle. You know, just because I know I shouldn't be eating sugar or eating cookie dough doesn't mean because I know that, that I'm going to actually not do it. Just because I, you know, like it's, it's practice. Like I have to have intention. I need to not buy the cookie dough. You know, like it's, there's action. It's not just something we think about because our thinking, our, our best thinking gets us in trouble. It does for me. All right, let's move on. Let's read Hope for Today. So how are you guys doing today? Yeah, it's okay not to be okay. I finally um, answered a lot of the comments. I've been just kind of overwhelmed with work but guess what today I emptied 50% of my car so it's only 50% full <laughs> I did some errands I had my day off going to work tomorrow so I don't know I feel accomplished I feel like okay some of that overwhelm that was bottling up, I was able to do. So I have a list and I'm gonna just check off what I can. And I will, ex you know, I'll just accept what I can do and just keep going, see like, oh, maybe I can get more done. But if I don't, that's okay. You know, I'll just do the best I can. All right, so newcomers often ask how it's possible to detach from the alcoholic with love rather than trying to change him or her or them, depending. So my answer is to concentrate on taking loving care of myself. Then I can detach from almost any obsession about other people, places, and things. Changing myself is such a freaking big job that it keeps me fully occupied. If it were easy, I could do it today and then proceed tomorrow with trying to change the alcoholic in the world. Yet by the end of the day, I haven't gotten that much further with my own self-improvement, let alone the improvement of anyone else. So as for tomorrow, if my life in Al-Anon thus far is a reliable guide, I'll still have my hands full just working to change myself. I don't let myself get discouraged. Perfection never really has worried me because I know it's unattainable. Instead, I'm thrilled with the small daily changes I can make in my attitudes and actions. Good job. I see sufficient progress to push on like a tortoise. Sometimes I detect my growth when I retake my fourth step and compare it with the results of the last time I took it. <laughs> I also listen to my higher power, God of my understanding, often speaks to me through others who tell me how much I've changed and grown. So the thought for today, changing myself is a permanent full-time position that only I can fill. And there's a quote from Alateen, A Day at a Time, page 252. And it says, I have to use a hands-off policy with the alcoholic and addict and concentrate on improving myself. 
So great reinforcement. Page 350. I like this one. Changing myself is such a big job that it keeps me fully occupied. Good one. Good one. Just for tonight, I will be grateful. I will give thanks for the past day. It's failures as well as its successes. It's sadness as well as its joy and it's pain as well as its pleasure. I will take comfort in knowing that every event and circumstance that occurred today can be used for my good and the good of others. That's just for tonight, bookmark. All right, here we go. We're gonna see one day at a time in al -Anon. I hope this doesn't go too long for you guys. Um, but uh, if you hang out, we're gonna read So You Love an Alcoholic. It looks like it's good. I haven't read it, so. We will get there. All right, let's go. Here you go, one day at a time in al -Anon. I'm learning to recognize in myself any immoderate emotional reactions to things that happen or to something that is said to me. If I notice that I still squirm and agonize over past mistakes and disappointments, I will observe that and correct it. Likewise, I will guard against thoughts of dread of what may happen in the future. I will guard against them. So how can I know what's going to be? I don't know. How can I know? This awareness comes through the study of the al program. It shows me how to overcome these handicaps by taking care of just one little day at a time. This one day I can easily cope with. If I have not fritted, frittered, if I have not, this one day I can easily cope with if I have not frittered away my energies on destructive emotions and if I do not provoke antagonism by criticisms, complaints, and reproaches. So today's reminder, when anything happens to disturb me on this day, I will ask myself, is it my problem? Does it really matter so much? Is it important? Today I will observe how I react and what I am tempted to say or do. If I notice that I squirm and agonize over past mistakes and disappointments, I will observe that and correct it. And I will guard against thoughts of dread, of what may happen in the future. I keep thinking about listening to music. I listen to, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be at the gallery tomorrow. So I get to choose my music. And so I'm like sort of a DJ on Sonos, Sonos radio. And oh, some of the channels are just like, uh, you know, like I was listening to jazz and then there was like too much horn, like too much horn, like I was like, okay, I can't take it anymore. And then, um, so I was listening to some reggae and, you know, so then you're like, you know, so then you get to hear a little bit of that. This is reggae music, you know, so I'm like, I'm dancing. I can't help it. It just feels so good. So this way I'm guarding against those dreadful thoughts of what may happen. <laughs> so, I don't know. That's just what I do. Dancing just to positive music, not like depressing or I remember uh, my first divorce. I was so like, I did not want to listen to country music during that time. It was back in the nineties. Um, and I was like, it's so like, I can't take it anymore. I don't want to hear about 
how he wishes he didn't do that and da da da. Like I was just like I couldn't take it. You know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, country music um, had that at the time. I don't know. I don't listen to it now. You know, it has a lot of modern things going on. But at the time, it was all about like I was at the bar. I wish I didn't do that and da da. da. And I was like, I was just at that. I wasn't ready to hear it. And um, but I'm ready now. So anyway, so uh, also. Um, yeah, so let's read this. That's a good uh, carry into So You Love an Alcoholic. Here we go. Welcome newcomer pamphlets. You can find, yeah, by calling your al toll free. <laughs> I'm sure they will send you one. And here we go. So You Love an Alcoholic. Take courage. There is hope. Alcoholism is an illness. The first thing to acknowledge, believe, and accept is that alcoholics suffer from a real sickness, a sickness which affects all those close to them. Um, the American Medical Association and many other authorities the world over declare that alcoholics suffer from an illness over which they have no control. Alcoholism is not caused by weakness of will, immortality, immorality or desire to hurt others. Scientific advances in the understanding of this disease have refined old ideas based on superstition, ignorance, and prejudice. The success of this approach is proven by the powerful evidence of many thousands of recoveries in Alcoholics Anonymous, Al-Anon, and al -Ateen. By accepting the idea that alcoholism is an illness from which problem drinkers and those who care about them can find release, you will have no reason to be ashamed of alcoholism, no reason to fear it. Learn the facts, wipe your mental slate clean of everything you think you know about alcoholism, then apply yourself to learning about this disease. Read everything available about the disease of alcoholism. A vast amount of information is accessible through public libraries and the internet. Attending open meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous can provide valuable firsthand knowledge about the alcoholism from recovering alcoholics themselves. Open meetings can be attended by anyone interested in the problem of alcoholism. AA is usually listed. And this is written while well, the telephone directory, if there's such a thing anymore. Uh, but you can find it on, even there's an app. It's called, it has like a little chair. I don't know what it, I'll look to see on my phone. So help yourself now. Don't wait to seek help. Anyone who has suffered from the effects of someone else's drinking faces constant emotional strains and pressures and needs help in relieving these. You will find relief, understanding, support, and warm-hearted help in an non family group. There you will, as one member put it, learn to live again. The al -Anon family groups... Uh, with nearly 26,000 group worldwide, there may be one close by. So let me skip down here. Uh, conversations with al members who share similar problems will help you accept that alcoholism is a disease. Sharing this knowledge can help you begin your own recovery. So some important do's and don'ts. Don't treat the alcoholic like a child. Consider this, pers this person as if he or she or they were suffering from any other disease. Do attend Al-Anon meetings regularly and find a group where you feel comfortable. Don't check up to see how much the alcoholic is drinking. Search, don't search for hidden liquor or pour liquor out. Whoops, I did that. So do reach out for help in between meetings by calling members and reading the literature like we do here. So don't nag the alcoholic about the drinking. Never argue while he or she or they are under the influence of alcohol. Safety, be safe guys. Do remember that we can't control cause or cure alcoholism. Don't preach, scold or enter into quarrels with the alcoholic. Be safe guys. Do attend at least, so six meetings before deciding if Al-Anon is right for you. So 
If you follow these suggestions, they can bring about more comfortable frames of mind for ourselves. And um, alcoholics su suffer from feelings of guilt beyond anything the non-alcoholic can imagine. Reminding them of failures, neglect of family and friends, and social errors is all wasted effort. I'm sure you can relate to that. It only makes the situation worse. True. The, the if you only loved me approach, I did that, um, is likewise futile. Remember that alcoholism is compulsive in nature and cannot be controlled by willpower. So equally useless are promises, coaxing, arguments, and threats. Don't threaten unless you are prepared to carry out your threat. Guard against a self-righteous superior attitude. Hostility and contempt cannot cure an illness and may keep us from becoming the type of person we are striving to be. Sometimes a crisis, the loss of a job, an accident, or an arrest can convince the alcoholic of the need for help. Coddling and overprotection at such time will not be helpful. The crisis may be necessary to recovery, but there's no guarantee in my experience. Do nothing to prevent such crisis from happening. Don't cover bad checks, pay overdue bills, or go to the boss with excuses. The suffering you, tr you are trying to ease by such actions may be the very thing needed to bring the alcoholic to a realization of the seriousness of the situations. So if the alcoholic asks for help, often the first sign of alcoholic's desire to stop drinking comes at the end of a desperate and hopeless period. It may come during a remorse of a hangover, or it may be precipitated by a crisis. Then your knowledge of alcoholism and your wiser attitudes toward the alcoholic develop in Al-Anon will be of great help to the desperate question, what shall I do? Simply, simply say ample help is available. If asked for suggestions, you can be specific, mentioning AA and other sources of help you may have found if asked. Remember though, that this outcome cannot be forced and might not even occur. The alcoholic must be ready for help before he or she or they can be helped. So don't even insist the drinker use the word alcoholic. Even such a phrase as I might have a drinking problem may even acknowledge meant of the need for help. So when it is clear the alcoholic wants help, a talk with an AA member may be the next step, not requested by you, however, but by the alcoholic. Whatever course of action is decided upon, the decision must be the alcoholics. It should be plainly understood that he or she is taking the step freely. At this time, you can help yourself by staying in close contact with al members and your group. Elanon can continue to help whether the alcoholic eventually stops drinking or not. So the road back for those alcoholics who do embrace the AA program, the rep, uh, recuperation time may be difficult. Constantly keep in mind that easy does it, quote, um, don't expect immediate complete recovery for the drinker or the family. Alcoholism, the illness, took a long time to develop. Convalescence is a slow process too. There may be what are known as dry drunks, emotional tensions in the alcoholic that have nothing to do with the actual drinking. So be patient. At such times, you may think things are worse than they were in the drinking days, but they're not. Patience and tolerance will help these trying times pass. Extreme fatigue for a year or more after drinking stops may be one of the symptoms of the drinker's withdrawal from alcohol. 
Don't try to force things, plan your own activities and continue to go to Al-Anon. Don't be overprotective. Recovering alcoholics need to learn to live in a world where alcohol is served and answer for themselves. Guard against feelings of jealousy or resentment about the method of recovery chosen. chosen. Many alcoholics need daily AA meetings. Just remember it is treatment for an illness. Be grateful if the alcoholic seeks recovery, even when it means he or she or they are always away from home and receive help. As the alcoholic gets rid of old drinking friends, habits and haunts, there will be time for, an, for other enthusiasm including AA, be encouraging of change. When you begin finding interesting activities for yourself in Al-Anon, it takes the focus off the alcoholic and you become responsible for your own happiness. Both of you will be on the way to a new life together, each in your own way. Everyone may have slips and setbacks, don't take these seriously. Believe that a firm foundation for recovery has been laid. If you feel that either of you has made mistakes, learn from them and forget them. Let go of the disappointments and setbacks and push forward. The way ahead is not always easy, but it can be full of rich rewards. Recovery from the effects of alcoholism is possible and Al-Anon can help. So, right, yikes, hard roads, but, and it just, you know, we work at it a little by little. It's not like, okay, I got it. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to win the game. I wish it was like that, but, you know, the game continues and life continues. And um, if you love an alcoholic, and there's, there's courage that's needed here and there is hope. So there you go. There's more um, I'll read in another day, understanding ourselves in alcoholism, I think this is. And uh, yeah, that this is all worthwhile reading for me too. So um, with that, we'll go ahead and end this long video and I'm glad whoever's here that stayed we're gonna go ahead and say the serenity prayer roll up my sleeves and here we go the we version so God nice deep breath be present with me God grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change to have the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. It's like a song, God's will be done. Keep coming back, it works if you work it because you, 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 you are worth it. And thank you so much for the comments, likes help the algorithm so people can find us they could just be plugging in something because they're feeling, you know, discontent. You know, they're feeling stress about um, their their life becoming unmanageable and not understanding why. And maybe if they find this, they'll get some ray of hope. And um, where's my cat? Yes, you doing okay? Yes. <laughs> I hope she doesn't hold a grudge, but I love her so much. I'm glad she's okay. I was worried about her. You know, you worry about um, when they have to go under. You know, there's like, there's a chance that something can happen. And with all this stuff happening in the universe, I was just like, ah. But, you know, I just want the best for her. And um, it all worked out. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. God willing. Bye, you guys.